Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about floaters. If you have had floaters before, you know that they can be a little bit of a nuisance as they kind of float around your visual field. But sometimes they can be a sign of something more substantial like a retinal tear or a retinal detachment. So today we're going to talk about what floaters are, when they're normal, and when you need to worry about them. I'm Dr. Allison Young from the Eye Surgeon Channel, and today we're going to talk about floaters. Floaters are, again, a super, super common symptom that probably most everybody will experience at some point in the course of their life. But what exactly are they? Um, when you see floaters, what they look like is just little kind of grayish or black strands or little floating, almost kind of mosquito looking objects that are floating in your in your visual field. You've probably noticed that they're more commonly seen when you are looking at something that has not not very much detail, like a blue sky or a white, you know, piece of paper or white background on your computer. And what the floaters actually are are little condensations in the vitreous gel in the back of our eye. So this is Back to our handy eye model, this is a cross section of the eyeball. So here is the cornea, the front surface of the eye. Directly behind that is the iris, the colored part of the eye, the lens. And then this entire space is a huge open cavity that's occupied by this, this substance called the vitreous. The vitreous gel is very, very formed when we are in our you know teens and 20s, kind of early in life. It's really solid, almost like jello, and it barely moves at all. And so that's why in those years, we really don't see floaters because the, the vitreous is just very, very firm. But as we start to age, in our 30s and our 40s and definitely 50s, 60s and beyond, all of those collagen bonds that make up the vitreous gel start to break down and the vitreous starts to liquefy. As the vitreous starts to liquefy, you'll get these little clumps that form in the vitreous, little condensations that are gonna be suspended you know, intermittently throughout the vitreous. And so what we actually see as floaters is a shadow cast on the retina when the light comes in through the eye, hits that little condensation, and then casts a shadow on the retina. We're not actually seeing the condensations themselves because they're in the eye. They're too close to our retina for us to perceive them. But we can see that shadow that's cast on the retina. And that's why you notice them more when it's a bright lighting setting. If you're in a dark room, you know, or, or really there's something else for your brain to look at. If you're looking at a complex image, you're not going to see those floaters as much as you will if you're looking at that bright blue sky. So if you're having those kind of occasional floaters that start in your 30s and 40s, they're usually not worrisome. But occasionally, as the, the vitreous gel starts to liquefy, it will actually pull away to some of its attachments in the back of the eye. The vitreous is attached very firmly to three different locations in the back of the eye. It's attached to the optic nerve, which is right here. And as the nerve comes into the back of the eye, we can see that in cross section, a little circle. It's attached to the retinal blood vessels and it's attached to the very far periphery of the retina, um, where the retina is kind of stretched out to its thinnest point. And so as that vitreous is starting to pull away, it can pull a little piece of tissue off of the optic nerve and you'll actually see this little ring shaped area of tissue. We call that a Weiss ring. So this is called a posterior vitreous detachment. So what is a posterior vitreous detachment? A posterior vitreous detachment is a normal process of aging. And again, it just means that that vitreous gel is gonna be pulling away from the back connections to the optic nerve and to the retina. Um, patients will typically say when they present with this, you know, I've had floaters for many years, but all of a sudden I just had this really big floater and it was in the shape of a ring or some, you know, semblance of a ring because they can actually see that little piece of tissue that's been pulled off from the optic nerve. So the reason that we make a big deal about this is that about 15, 10 to 15% of people who have a posterior vitreous detachment will have a retinal tear associated with that. And the reason for that is that as we were talking about earlier, the retina is one of the things that the vitreous is very closely adherent to. And so as the vitreous is pulling away from the retina, if it pulls a little tear in the retina, that can lead to a retinal detachment, which of course, you know, we don't want to happen. So if that were to happen, we could of course treat that, but we wanna get you in and, and get you seen as soon as possible if, 
if you're at risk for that. The symptoms that people have if they are about to experience a retinal tear or they are experiencing a retina tear are that they'll have these peripheral arc-like flashes of light. Um, the flashes are typically split second. A lot of times people wonder if they're even seeing it. They feel like maybe a camera flash or you know, something, a reflection, you know, off of a light or something was what they were seeing. And then they realized, oh my gosh, this is actually happening inside of my eye. The reason that we see that flash is that as the, the vitreous is tugging on the retina, that traction on the retina is going to be perceived by us as a flash. Most people will describe them out in the temporal periphery, but occasionally you can see them nasally as well. But they're almost always going to be in an arc shape, split second, and people describe them as kind of a white or silver flash. Um, the other thing that people frequently see with a retinal tear is a whole bunch of little tiny floaters. So I call them pepper dot floaters because people say it feels like somebody took a pepper shaker and just shook it in front of the eye and instead of a couple little, you know, big amoebas floating around, they've got hundreds of little tiny dots. The reason that this is a symptom is that as that retina is tearing, it will release pigment from underneath the retina. That pigment then scatters throughout the vitreous and we can see that as we're looking through um, the vitreous. We'll see all those little pepper dot floaters. So our front desk knows that if somebody calls with flashes or pepper dot floaters, they're coming in immediately. But in general, we tell anybody who's having a new onset floater, especially if it's large, that they should come in because like I said, about you know 10 to 15% of people who have a posterior vitreous detachment are going to develop a tear. So what will happen at your visit when you come in is we'll get you in, we'll get the eye dilated, and we're gonna look all the way around the edges of that retina to make sure that there's not a tear. If there isn't a tear, but I can see that somebody has developed a posterior vitreous detachment, then I just give them those warnings that we were just talking about. If you're having flashes of light, if you're having pepper dot floaters, come back and see me sooner. And then I always follow up with them about two to three weeks after that initial visit because this, this posterior vitreous pulling away from the retina is kind of a process in evolution. So the highest risk for a tear is gonna be in those first few weeks afterwards. So we bring them back and check them all over again and make sure that the retina looks a-okay. If there's a tear, then the next step is to immediately get you to a retina specialist to treat that tear. So the tear itself can never be put back to place, but what they can do, say the tear is way out here in the peripheral retina, they'll use a laser to spot weld around that tear so that the two layers, the retina and the choroid, kind of you know, spot weld together, they shrink together so that no fluid is allowed to come up underneath that retina and cause a retinal detachment. This procedure is an outpatient procedure. The retina docs are wonderful. They do these all day long. Uh, it takes a couple of weeks for that laser to really settle in. So they tell patients to kind of take it easy for about a week or two after the procedure. Um, but the wonderful thing about this treatment is that it does not affect the vision and people preserve, you know, it preserves their vision for folks, which is excellent. If there were actually a retinal detachment, that's a little bit bigger procedure, and we can certainly talk about that in a different video, but we definitely wanna make sure that anybody with flashes or pepper dot floaters comes in immediately. Okay, so let's summarize. Floaters, a lot of floaters are just a normal process of aging. So if you've noticed that occasionally you see a little mosquito fly, flying through your field of vision, that's okay, and if that comes and goes, we're really not worried about those. What's not okay is all, if all of a sudden you notice these peripheral flashes of light or you have a whole bunch of new floaters, especially if they're hundreds of little black pepper dot floaters. Um, you know, patients are always kind of confused or wonder like, when should I call my ophthalmologist? And I always tell them, if you're worried, you call. We only have two eyeballs. And so we really wanna make sure that, that if there's something that needs to be seen, we get you seen. Um, again, if you have a posterior vitreous detachment, there is an 85 to 90% chance you're going to be fine and nothing's going to happen at all. But considering almost all of us are going to get a posterior vitreous detachment, 10 to 15% of all comers is a pretty big number. So we want to make sure you're seen. So never feel bad about calling um, our front desk and just front desks in general can kind of help evaluate that and, and give you some guidance. But in general, we only have two eyes. So if you're worried about them, please come in. All right, well, that's it on floaters, guys. I hope you found this helpful. If so, please remember to like and subscribe to the iSurgeon channel so we can keep you up to date on all new content. Have a great day.